It's sad, isn't it? It's a cough drop that never got to be a cough drop. Hello. Welcome to Fourth Seat After Dark. So called because we're poor and can't afford to light our home. Yeah, the electric company actually cut off our power, and uh, I am currently running off my modem, which is plugged into a potato, and uh, my internet is running through my phone, which I've charged by plugging into a second potato. And we're going to play some Crash and Spyro tonight. So let's get the overlay up. It'll make me a lot smaller. And let me pull up the emulator. Don't tell Jack I'm streaming. It's a secret. It's not really a secret. You can tell him if you want to. This is a uh, another Zelrog solo stream. So if you're looking for something a little more relaxed, Maybe this will be the thing. Let's see, PlayStation. And our PlayStation emulator likes to be funny in that you can't just run the ISO. You got to uh, start the program first. All right. Oh, whoops. This is the wrong overlay. Let's just let's fix that. There we go. Okay, that's better. That's the overlay we're looking for because that's the game that we're going to start with. I'm finally starting Crash 3. And are we on? Is the analog appearing? Oh, right. Uh, PlayStation. Oh. Entertainment America presents. Thank you, announcer. A Universal Interactive Studio production. Ooh, that sound quality could be better. Yeah, that's a good stanky voice. We're starting off with a bang. All right, let's do this. Oh, wait, do we get a? Uh, if we leave it, do we get a story? Do we get an animation? Let's find out. I don't remember in this game. Or do we just get demo footage? Maybe it's just demo footage. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna guess it's just demo footage. Alright. By the way, is this not the most subtle three in a video game title ever? It's just the three on the clock is red. That's all it is. Yep, just demo footage. So, is the title Crash 3 Warped? Is it, uh... Everywhere I know lists it as just Crash Bandicoot Warped. The, uh... Good old EPSX window move loop that we get. Alright, so it's been a while since I did... Long while since I did Crash 1. Not quite as long since Crash 2, obviously. But, uh... On average... I've been kind of stacking them between the Spyro games. Oh, he's got some stank in this version. Uka Uka is free. No. It cannot be. Good, uh, good evil first voices for the evil has come. for the crash. Hey, the, the mask can talk. This is not the uh, PS the PS4 remake that everyone's doing. This is OG emulated. It was that bandicoot. Oh, that lip syncing. Unfortunate setbacks and failed. But since your 
fumbling has managed to set me free. I am feeling generous. There is no way for us to amass the power needed to enslave this miserable planet. And this time, it's time to bring you Kalunga. We'll make sure that you do it right. After many eons, my oh, hey, there's Tana with in the back. Uga Uga has been freed from his underground prison. Long ago, I locked him there to protect the world from his malice. Now, freed once again, he must be stopped. <laughs> Children, Uka Uka and Cortex plan to use this time twisting machine to gather crystals that lay scattered across time. I have brought you here to recover the crystals before they do so. To open the time portal, simply stand on a button and then jump into the portal. Good luck. So we got uh, ancient bandicoot Aztec magic and suddenly time portals. So I guess we're hijacking the time machine is supposed to be the idea? I don't know. And then they play up the... What's his name? Entropy? Is the time fella? Has this big bad force of evil and he's just a mid... He's just a third boss. Nothing final about him. Nothing that big. He'll be a time trials character in CTR. That's about it. That's all he'll, he'll get. So, yeah, I was starting, uh, I did Crash 1 before I made Jack play Spyro 1. Then I did Crash 2, and then we did Spyro 2, and we haven't finished Spyro 2. In fact, we're gonna do a little bit of that tonight without Jack. Don't, don't tell him, it's a secret. But, before that, I'm gonna take a chip out of Crash 3, hopefully. Hopefully at least one warp room. I don't know. We'll see how long an hour gets us. Woohoo! Oh. <coughs> oh, I got my voice mostly back. Not quite back for that, though. Oh, Toad Village beat me. Oh, look. I have a mad tilting me, too. We will find out which one is more powerful soon enough. I like how that first line when uh, Uka Uka was freed... He had, like, a Soul Man accent. And then the actor just abandoned that after that. Like, the character changed to be just not that, I guess, after that point. Just completely changed the direction. So, uh, these crates are a little more bearable now. Now you get two at a time, only have to bounce five times. Oh, an unrelated note. I had forgotten that Uka Uka's voice was literally Grand Fisher. Or Inspector Claw. Same, it's all the same voice. Same thing. Or the Shockmaster. Yeah, I'll take a life. That'll do. Now, this might sound weird when I say it, I almost feel like this game is too colorful. Like, uh, Crash 1 and 2, okay, I, I will say this. Crash 1 and 2, I owned when I was younger. I grew up with those. Crash 3, I think a friend of, a friend of mine had it. And I played it at his house now and again, I think. But I did not own Crash 3 until I was older. So I do not have quite the nostalgia for this one as other Crashes. But I got it at, I got it at some point when I was a teenager. Just not when I was, you know, real young. Still think it's a great game. Just, uh... Not, not, it's not my favorite of the three. It's, I, it doesn't beat Crash 2 for me. I kind of liked the, uh, the kind of dim Aztec setting of, like, the warp rooms in Crash 2. I always thought those looked really cool. Mystic. But now it's gone full on sci-fi for Crash Warped. Look at how colorful and whimsical this all is. 
which Crash Series always has been to some degree, but I don't know. It's a very, it's a very subtle, slight difference. I wonder if this, uh, if I wonder if they had the same. Uh, I wonder if they had the same game directors and uh, like art directors, setting director, what, whatever that, whatever the job is, for the three games. Or I wonder if it changed anywhere down the line. Oh, we're getting some cool like feedback sounds from the sound system. Got to uh, celebrate the crotch dance. Now, I wonder, is this... I wonder if this is the regular display for the game. This, uh, it's... Because you see the black bars on top and bottom. I wonder if that's normal or if, uh... Maybe PlayStation just has a weird aspect ratio. I don't know. Game Boy Advance had a weird aspect ratio, which we, uh... We saw in the Sonic Battle stream. Speaking of battles... Mega Man Battle Network is one that I want to start soon. It's on the, uh, I added a coming eventually list on Twitch of all the stuff me and Jack have talked about but haven't gotten to, uh, set a time for yet. Fuck these levels, by the way. Crash Bandicoot did not need underwater levels. No games need underwater levels. We learned that after Mario 1. At least, he's, at least he can move kind of quickly. Still, these were, uh... I never liked these. These were always a pain. And it's... I don't know. There's always some stupid box that's hidden in coral or something. Real easy to miss in some form or another. I will, uh... I don't know. I guess we'll see how 100% I end up going with this. How long I want to stick with it. Because I have... Obviously, I've gotten all the gems and crystals before. That's not that big a task. It's comparable to the other Crash games. The real son of a bitch that they added from here on is the relics. And, uh... I'm pretty sure that I have gotten all of the relics before... I don't think I've ever gotten all platinum relics, which is like basically it's like staff time trials is what it is I think. So those are the very best of the best times, and I don't think I just I every time I just I lose interest. I am not interested enough in time trials to uh like if it's just a matter of beating one set time for a relic, I would be okay with it. But the multiple ranks of relics that's what that's what always got to me I, I was just wasn't I didn't care enough I still don't care enough so it's unlikely that this will be the time but we'll see we'll see how long it takes we'll see how arsed I am or if you're in England how assed I am supposed to get on one. I, there's, like, stuff I've got to do on foot first. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. I forget. Do I... Un maybe I unlock the relics as soon as I've, uh, finished the level? Is that available yet? I wasn't looking. But then the question is, do I have to reach a point before I'm able to get the platinum relics? Do those have to unlock somehow? Oh, and I can't get invincibility underwater. Oh, well. Oh, no! Ah. Well. Take me, death. Oh, am I not going to be able to die? God damn it. Can I just take the hit without destroying them? I gotta go all the way back to the electric things? Or eel? Eat me, eel. Eel. Oh, bomb. There we go. Yeah, 
yeah, these streams tend to be a lot, uh, a lot more relaxed without Jack around. Not that that's a problem, it's just different strokes. I imagine there's an, uh, there's probably an audience for Zelrog solo streams that is very disseparate from, uh, the Jack and Zelrog combo streams. And this, I believe, is the first Zelrog solo stream where I'm using a webcam. Which is mostly because I had an overlay to fill. This is a... Uh, this thing is pushing me forward automatically. I can't just stay in place with it. I accelerate, whether I want to or not, so... That's kind of what uh, is the threat here. That's what's getting me killed. This is actually not an After Dark video. If you hadn't pieced that together yet. I'm glad that uh, Crash has come back into relevance. If only because of one meme. And I don't even know the source of that meme. I know it's... A, is it from the... I know it came around about the same time as the PS4 collection. But I don't know if it's from the PS4 collection or if it just... The collection brought an interest in Crash, which... Spawn the meme. I, I, I don't know. Hey, guess who we get to play as now? Guess what she can't do? Anything. She can walk and she can jump. And that's it. She is pretty much just here to say that there's a second playable character. Granted, things are different in the, uh, Wrath of Cortex, which is the sixth, oh, damn it. Can I die? I can die, good. Which is the, uh, sixth Crash game, first one on the PS2. First one, okay, not the first one that's not by Naughty Dog, but the first one that feels like it's by a different company. And, uh, overall, it was pretty good. It was a very, it ripped off most everything from just, it was just a, a reimagined version of Crash Warp for those of you who have not played Wrath of Cortex. But even so, even if it wasn't particularly original, it was still, for the most part, a good game. God damn it, Coco, get the boxes. And of course, she doesn't have a... She doesn't have death deaths like Crash does. She just kind of bonks her head and wobbles a little bit. Damn it. What was I talking about? Oh, right, Wrath of Cortex. The, the big issue with the game was uh, loading times. They were awful, 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 awful. Awful waffle loading times in Wrath of Cortex for the PS2. And of course, the older the disc gets, the worse the loading times get. So, uh, if slash when I finally getting a, get around to doing that, it's going to be a fun, fun experience. I'm going to have to have like a... Uh, I'm gonna have to have a second game ready so that I'll have something to play during the loading times. I did it! Yeah, girl power. Not that I'm not glad she's playable. It's just... They could have stand made her more active as a character instead of only being on vehicle levels. 
Or at least, you know, use her, her gimmick of being the, you know, the smart one, the techno character, instead of just, you know, hop on a tiger. Like, there's no reason that it couldn't have been Crash doing that level. And in Wrath of Cortex, as I was saying, she gets some movement. She gets some actual platforming levels where she can move around and do attacks and stuff like that. So that was nice. Oh, double gem. I kind of miss when Tiny didn't talk. He was a lot more intimidating that way. Now he's more of a, like, a, uh, a big mook. A Team Rocket villain, if you will. Somehow a big, dumb, talking tiger is not as intimidating as a, uh, raging, foaming, wild tiger. Tony the Tiger, not quite up to the task of uh, Shere Khan in terms of intimidation factor. Who knew? I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die here. Yep, I is dead. Why does why do dinosaurs hate Crash? Do they know? Does this dinosaur know that mammals are gonna be the surviving race? Oh, come on. Did that count? I don't know if that counted. Does it think that if it kills the mammals now, that uh, it will somehow change history and dinosaurs will be on top again? Okay, it does count. So I don't actually need to get any, any of these. Like, he knows that Crash came from the future. Crates still count. Yeah, this one got a little too cartoony for my taste. And then Twin Sanity turned it up to 12. In order, there was Crash 3, Crash Team Racing. Crash Bash, and then Wrath of Cortex was the first platformer after this one. So, uh, after that was uh, Crash Nitro Kart on the PS2, and then I think it was Twin Sanity was the next one, and that was the, that was the most recent, that's the most recent Crash game I've played, is Twin Sanity. And I actually rented it, I don't own Twin Sanity, I need to get it, and that that was super, super cartoony. I guess I wasn't counting, like, the, uh... The handheld Crash games. I know there was, like, a... It was, like, Crash's Big Adventure or something on the Game Boy... I think they were all Game Boy Advance. With some, like, little egg dude. Whose name escapes me. End something. End gauge. Sure, end gauge. And, uh... End trance. I think that was it. Aw. So there was one or two Game Boy Crash games. And then, not counting even beyond that, Crash Purple and Spiral Orange, which was just atrocious in all accounts. The idea was there. Make a crossover. People love crossovers. Would have been cool. Activision was onto something. They just, uh, execution, not so much. Execution wasn't there. Oh, come on, Crash. 
it was a party game. Well, not even a party game. It was a mini game collection with shitty mini games that uh, there just wasn't replay value there. It if it was a party game like Crash Bash, maybe, and they had better mini games, but they didn't. And they were both basically the same game, just one playing as Crash and one as Spyro. That was it. You know, that was the uh, height of the multiple versions craze. Which obviously started with Pokemon. And Mega Man Battle Network did it. We're going to get to that series sooner or later. <coughs> with uh, Mega Man Battle Network was a bad offender there. Because the once they started multiple versions of that, the differences between the versions were so incredibly minute. Like, it was like one boss was different. Maybe a couple chips in the very, very end post-game was the only differences. And the only way they would get money out of it was by really die-hard completionists having to buy both games. And that was it. There wasn't... There weren't people... I can't imagine there were that many people who were playing with their friends to collect everything or what, however that was. Battle Network was bad. Well, I mean, not bad games. They were terrific games, but that was that. I will fault them for that. The multiple versions thing. And uh, yeah, Crash Orange, Crash Purple, and Spiral Orange were pretty bad in that regard. They also needed. Uh, they also required trading in order to 100%, because that was the thing that you had to do at the time. You know, it's it all about trading. I would have cared a lot more about completing the Battle Network games if, uh, I don't know, like the Pokemon games, collections carried, carried over between generations. Like, I could send chips from Battle Network 3 to Battle Network 4, or whatever it was. I've actually not played past Battle Network 3. Which may be my favorite game of all time. I don't know. It's up there. In the top three at the very lowest. I heard the series got different after three. I heard four was weird. But I don't know. I hope to get to it. I hope to play it on stream after the after the first three. Stop. Break. Coco, break! I got birded. What's my break? Do I have a break? Where am I? Is this the Caribbean? Is Johnny Depp shooting at me? I don't actually, uh, I realize I don't tend to talk a lot when I'm on a stream solo, so I, uh, in trying to come up with topics, I inadvertently every solo stream turns into a, a lesson on game history. Which, I don't know, maybe some people find that interesting. I hope they do. I have an abundance of knowledge on the subject. As far as, you know, games I've played. Not so much on games I haven't played. I know nothing about, uh, nothing about series like Halo. Which I know is blasphemous to a lot of people. But I was thinking today specifically about how little I knew about Halo. The only exposure I've had to the series was uh, Red vs. Blue. And even that, I didn't watch until re very recently and I still didn't love. I did not get on the ground floor on that series. It's okay. It's fine. Internet show, I guess. But, uh, no, I've never, uh, I've never held a controller for a system on which a Halo game was playing. I've never been to a friend's house and watched them play Halo. I've had just zero exposure. It just was never in my life. So, Xbox in general, I just, I had nothing to do with growing up. I did, I think a friend of mine had an Xbox. We never played it together. 
And I remember the one thought, the two, two thought, okay, I had three thoughts about the Xbox. The original Xbox. One, I had a PS2 and I thought it was stupid that you had to have an additional thing you had to buy to play DVDs on an Xbox. Two, the controller had way too many buttons, which they fixed for the 360. And what was the third thing? Oh, right. It was heavy as shit. Those were my three childhood notes on the Xbox. Yeah, 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 whatever, Tiny. You, you're no longer threatening. His sprite is so much... Well, sprite. His 3D model here is so much more menacing looking than the detailed head in those cutscenes. <laughs> At least we... We get to, you know, kind of fight him in an arena setting instead of that bullshit stage hazard stuff in the previous game. You'd think lions would uh, be more homing, like they would see the marsupial flesh and kind of be drawn to it, but no, they just run in a straight line like lemmings off the edge. Hey, check it out. Supercharged Body Slam. So, uh... Those of you who have not played Crash 3, all two of you, you unlock additional powers over the course well, of this game. Time, sister. By defeating Tiny, you have unlocked the gate to the next time travel area. Go back to the center of this time twister and save your progress if you wish. From there, you will see that the gate to the second time travel area is now open. I do like that there is the contrast of, you know, mystic Aztec shit and technology, like, sci-fi time travel. At least whenever Aku Aku is talking. But other than that, I don't know. I think the second game had a better balance of the two. We've been going for half an hour, I guess. Two warp rooms it is. I wonder how long this this uh, this stream is gonna be. Like this game, we'll probably. If I get enough chances for solo streaming, I might finish this before we finish Spyro, Spyro 2. Which wouldn't be the end of the world because uh, oh, who's this colorful fella? He's new. I don't recognize him. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Crash... Oh. Why, why must you continue to be a thorn in our side? What? Where was I? Oh, Tiny was a good fellow. He hated everyone and everything, but a good heart nonetheless. Please be more reasonable with my minions next time. Oh, okay, Mask Cortex. Hollow Cortex with his hollow voice. No, Crash... The Spyro and Crash games were staggered because Spyro came about later than Crash. Is that, if I remember, Crash 1 and 2 happened, and then Spyro 1 uh, just about coincided with, uh, with Crash 3, this game. And then Spyro 2 came about around the same time as uh, Crash Team Racing, and Spyro 3 was with Crash Bash. Not with, as in they weren't released as a set, but uh, <clears throat> Naughty Dog and Insomniac had good relations with each other from from the start. And uh, at the very beginning, this was represented by uh, game demos on each other's discs. So on Spyro 1, there was a demo included for this game, for Crash 3, 
on Spyro 2 there was a demo for CTR and on Spyro 3 there was a, a Crash Bash demo and the vice versa was true for the three Crash games as well so that was cool it's a shame that you don't see uh, you know relationships like that these days outside of uh, like indie games like nowadays the best you're gonna get is like Super Meat Boy in Spelunky stuff like that Mostly cameo appearances. That seems to be the end thing, which, you know, I'm happy about. I'm glad characters are getting exposure. I just wish it happened more with, uh, you know, big titles. But, uh, you know, AAA de developers are really, really reluctant when it comes to any kind of crossover. Because how are we going to split the money? surely detonated that TNT. He didn't even try. Not a single magic blast was fired. Get, uh, get that frog for good measure. Friday Chinese before the stream today. The mic has thus far cooperated. It is, it's been a good boy. We, uh... We did... We had Eli, Miss Oman's voice of Rukia over for some recording. That was, uh, that was last Saturday, I think. And we have, uh, Washugal Otaku coming tomorrow, this Saturday, to do his lines. I've done mine, and we still have our other actors, including Jack, to get down for the next, uh, the next four-episode chunk of Bleach Abridged. So we, we're now using the uh, we're using the snowball here for recording. I had gotten a uh, I'd gotten a professional microphone that was not USB from uh, from a voice acting friend who is who's a professional. He's done, he's been in video games, some of which we are uh, going to play somewhere down the line. And uh, I bought a phantom power, power supply for the microphone. I'm, I'm going to nerd out about audio stuff for a little while here because i got nothing else to talk about. I got, a fan, I got a phantom power supply, which this mic needed. But uh, it was just mic in, mic out. That's all it was. It did not, I realized too late that it did not have any kind of amplifier on it. So... Uh, I was getting unusably low audio levels, and there was no way to boost it in post without it sounding, you know, just awful and full of crackles and everything. So, that was $20 wasted, no, ret no return on that. So, I bought a $100 equalizer board that had, like, four inputs and all this fancy stuff, and that was... Believe it or not, $100 is on, like, the very lowest of low end for an equalizer board. A decent one is gonna go thousands so that was my attempt at uh, staying within budget with a non USB mic and uh, I still didn't get I still wasn't getting any decent quality it was just room noise and it was too I was still getting better quality from the snowball I did a side-by-side -side. <clears throat> so the moral of the story is uh, don't invest just uh, stick with USB microphones. Unless you have like thousands and thousands of dollars to invest. In which case, maybe you can get something better, but it's still debatable. And the snowball, quality wise, has been great. We've gotten perfectly fine quality from it. We do have to. <coughs> Sorry. I do have to deal with uh, clicks now and again. 
and mouth noises, which I don't know how much of that is the microphone or how much of it is myself, but it made a... Uh, it's only really a problem for uh, when I did the like the audiobook long form recording. Because you really want to get a good solid single take on anything that long because editing just is editing is awful for a project that takes that that long. It's okay for like Bleach Abridged. We do uh we save each line individually so uh yeah we're working with very small very short sound files it's a lot easier than uh sorry i, I gotta split my focus here this is a somewhat somewhat trying Bonus stage. I wonder if I can go behind that. Do I want to? I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to try it. <laughs> but yeah, it's fine for for voice clips because they're so short to edit like the pops and clicks out manually. But for something you know that's like a, a sixty-hour audiobook, oh god, it's awful. I'm still not entirely happy with how the one I did turned out, even after I spent way, way longer than was intended on it. Oh, that's a cool slowdown. I see a gem. What are you doing back there? You just waiting for me? Is it, can I get to you? Oh, slow down, please. Plus, why I'm going through this box. Why am I entering this box? Where is this box? Oh, okay, there we go. So, uh, also, why can I not go on this roof? This is clearly a roof there. No? Okay. Whatever game, you are always right. Oh, no. I hope this didn't activate any nitro crates. It didn't. I'm good. Okay, so... That looks like a bouncy thing down there, but I don't think it is. I think I need an alternate point of entry to get that yellow gem. This fella I know has not, to my knowledge, worked with uh, Naughty Dog or Insomniac, but he has to, he has worked with uh, Sucker Punch. So he was in, in uh, he was in Sly, the Sly Cooper series and an Infamous. So that'll be fun when we get to that. Sly Cooper at least, Infamous, uh, maybe we'll see. I've a, I have it on the PS3. I've attempted to play it once or twice and just never gotten very far. I re realistic games in general just don't do it for me. I, I like games to have an art style one way or another. Oh, here we go. The forerunner to Crash Team Racing. Now, I think I need to get first place for the crystal and all the boxes still for uh, the gem. Oh, god damn it. Oh, you fucker. Probably better to focus on one thing at a time, I'm going to guess. I'm also going to guess that there are no checkpoints because of the nature of this level, it being, you know, a race and everything. No drifting that I'm aware of in this. 
Oh, that's it? That's the finish line? Well, I got the gem at least. Oh, no! It took until I attempted that voice that I realized that uh, Crash Bandicoot is basically a male Bubsy that talks less. What could possibly go wrong? Whoa! The talks less part is important. It's a good thing that he talks less than Bubsy. There's a uh, game series that is amazing. It never got off the ground. I also saw the... Uh, I saw bits of the Bubsy cartoon series that got shut down promptly and just justly. There was a uh, there was a Bubsy cartoon pilot that was uh, even worse than the games in the terms in terms of humor. It was bad. It wasn't good. Share the road, asshole! I think the ramps might slow me down. I'm not sure. They do if I'm in a wheelie. Staying in the wheelie after the charge pad for as long as possible is ideal. Out of the way! Oh, no! He's gonna win. No, he's not. I'm gonna beat him. I'm gonna beat him. Get out of the way. I win. Fuck you. And he ran over me. Yeah, too cool. Sunglasses crash. Glitch. Glitch all over the place. Black bars everywhere. <coughs> Ugh. My cough is very nearly gone. It came back a little strongly this morning. And, uh, Toad made it worse. I shouldn't have toted at the start of this stream. No matter what the level was called. Good day, mate. Good day! Uka dials the name, and Uka Uka and Cortex gave me orders to bring the crystals to them during the ice ages. Crikey! Now, give me the goods and shove off, or I'll roast you. On the barbie. I'm Australian, mate. All right, you ready to play some Tomb Raider? Let's play some Tomb Raider. I already got hit. Let's raid some tombs. So I wonder if this is supposed to take place in ancient Egypt or after the fact? Cause there's no one here like obviously this is like what a pyramid would look like to like an adventurer who was coming years later to like salvage the relics or whatever right I don't know time travel Why am I bothering? I don't care about the Wumpa. Oh, and I'll just eat that. Yeah. Can I not get that? Am I fucked? Yeah, I'm fucked. Bye bye. I, uh,. I will admit, I actually spent a, uh, a very large portion of my youth on the Crash Bandicoot forums on Neoseeker. In no small part because I had a friend there, Road Rocket, who has been mentioned a few times on this stream, who was, uh, I think, I think we might have met there, actually. I don't remember what started me. On the on the crash forums, and I I can't even I can't even feign a, a guess as to what got me there, but uh, there was some there was some dumb fun between people back when the games were 
you know, significantly relevant. Back when Neo Seeker was relevant. Oh, I can't kill the monkey. I can only incapacitate him. He's no longer a threat. And, uh... Oh, yeah, I mean... I started... A lot of my online relationships on Neoseeker forums at the time. Oh, that's a that's a gem path. Do I have that gem? I don't think I do. I don't. Okay. Rip. I wonder if I can still get all the boxes or if that had boxes in it. Also on the, uh, aside from Crash, oh no, 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 okay, oh no, on the, it, okay, I need noises, noises, lady. Also spent a lot of time on the, uh, Mario Kart DS forum. A lot of time was spent there under different names, so you don't need to bother looking up Zelrog. I don't think that'll turn much up on Neo Seeker. Oh, it's okay. I'm good. I can straighten out. What kind of Egyptians had flamethrowers, by the way? Did I get them all? I didn't. Okay. I needed the gem path. Next time. So, wasn't there two gems on this level? Do I need the gem path in order to get that gem as well as the box gem? Because that kind of sucks. No, it's just... Yeah, I guess so. There are two gems. All right. How do I get the yellow gem? Ah, whatever. Okay, so tomb time and... All right, that one. I'll just, uh, I think I'll probably wait for the end of the game to attempt relics if I do relics. I'm sure I'll do relics. I'll at least get all the relics in order to get, I think there's a relic ending. I think that's part of the 100% completion ending. I will probably not be going for all platinum relics because that takes forever. Lots of grinding. And I've never done that before. I've, I had... I did a run. The last time I attempted it on this game, I got maybe halfway through all the Platinum Relics. So, it's not like I'm not physically capable. It's just a lot of grinding and a lot of... It's like doing a speed run. You just got to do the same th same level over and over and over and find all these tricks and techniques. And it's just not a lot of fun to do, not a lot of fun to watch. Die. Die, Bandicoot. You missed a box. You must be punished. I may or may not have had a uh, had a kid crush on Coco. She was pretty cute. All right, go for it. Yeah, high jump. Nope, you failed. She gets a figure in uh, Crash Nitro Kart, too. Like, it's not to the extent that Nintendo did with uh, Tiny Kong, but it, it is noticeable from game to game. And I have no idea what she looks like now. For all I know, by now she's like 20 and legal. Who knows?
All right. Come on. Gem, you can do this. Got it. Got all the boxes and checkpoint. Okay, good. Sweet. Awesome. Now, part two of level. Level part two. Uh, swerving dragons. Shenron, please. Mercy. Checkpoint. Oh, okay, I got it. Sweet. Sweet. Oh. 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 Boxes, barrels, Donkey Kong, everywhere. Things. I watched, uh... God damn it. I mentioned in some previous streams that Jack and I have kind of started watching South Park episodes as they become relevant. Like, if I may, if we make a couple of uh, references to one, we'll go back and watch it. Especially, I've seen more South Park than he has, so usually I'll reference an episode that he hasn't seen, then we'll go watch that. And I had him watch the uh, James Cameron Honey Boo Boo episode last. Which, I don't know why I, that suddenly came to my mind. Did I, did I say something? James Cameron, did I say we need to go deeper? Or something along the... I don't remember. Maybe it's because the episode was all about shamelessness, and I'm, uh... I'm talking about, like, furry crushes. Not that there's anything wrong with furryism. Uh, come on. Okay, read card. Good. 20%. One-fifth of the way through this game. According to, like, gem count, anyway. So I think I'll clear out ding and That'll be about an hour. And, uh, I'll jump into some Spyro 2 cleanup. Crikey! Right, now you've gone and done it. Them crystals are mine. He's a dingo. He's a crocodile. Couple of... I guess... Are crocodiles Australia? Are, are there crocodiles in Australia? That's more of like a... a Florida Bayou kind of thing. I guess that... Okay. I guess that makes more sense why he'd be a redneck Australian if he's a... Uh, part Australian, part Louisiana. Yeah, lower your defenses. Make the, uh, make the space invaders mistake. Shoot through your own shields. Aha, you fool. Now get the fuck out. Get out, Crash. What an unstable flamethrower he has. You have a good bandicoot whack. You can set it off on a, t on a timed explosion. Whoops! I got got. I got ultimate. He dropped a meteor on me. At least the bosses continue to be dynamic throughout the Crash games. More so Crash 2 and 3 than Crash 1. Crash 1 had kind of easy bosses, for the most part. Okay, maybe not easy. Koala Kong and, uh... Pinstripe. There were some challenging bosses. I was more just, uh... Papu Papu was kind of a joke. He was the main one. Although he's, uh... I might argue even more of a joke in Crash Bash. That's right, Crash Bash. Fuck me. <coughs> Crash Bash, the party game. Made of mini-games. Has bosses. It's a good game. I stand by Crash Bash. Oh, did I get got? Did I have a mask? I didn't even see. I don't think I did. I think I'm good. I 
I think... Okay, no, I owned Crash Bash early on. God damn it. I'm just, I'm, I'm bad. I'm doing bad at this. I owned Crash Bash, I think as soon, I think I got a PS1 at around the time Crash Bash was released. And that was, that and the Crash games. Okay, no. My brother had a PS1 and that's how I played the Crash games first. Then I got my own PS1 and I think I got Crash Bash crash bash with it so that was like a uh, christmas thing my parents got me my own ps1 and crash bash and i was playing that through the christmas that year <coughs> or after the christmas <coughs> so i met uh i was introduced to dingadal through crash bash not through this game i i found out that he had he had been a character in this game first That's always fun when you find out about something from uh, a later entry. It's like all the, it's like the thousands of people who found out Ness existed and Ness and Captain Falcon existed because of Smash Brothers. What are these guys from? When did this game exist? Earth what? Come on. Okay, got him. Fuck off. Fucking off now. Get it. Crash, my might. No worries, but you'll soon be up against much worse. Yeah. So that penguin has a name. That one right there, just uh, hanging out. The dingadile was threatening. That's uh, Penta the penguin. Can I jump? Oh, I can bounce on him. I never did this before. Can I jump on the penguin? Oh, I got it. Okay, double jump. Sweet. I don't know why the penguin has a name, but uh, he is a secret, only available through hacking character in Crash Team Racing. I guess he's not even a secret character then. He's a removed character. <laughs> You're not supposed to be able to play as him. But, uh, thing is he's got like uh, some traits that put him on the heroes team in CTR and some traits that put him on the villains team so no one knows where that motherfucker Penta stands he's a he's a wild card he could be on anyone's side so uh, on the note of Penta Penguin that'll end our crash for the night and I'm going to swap over to Spyro so if you want to hang out I will be right back. <laughs> 